12th, Blessed Eustochium, Virgin, Second Order. Eustochium was born in the year 1430 at Messina, Sicily, and received in baptism the name, the name Zmaragda, which means the emerald. Following the example of her devout mother, Matilda, of the princely family of the Colonna, she shunned intercourse with the world, even while still very young. She wore a coarse penitential garb under her outer clothing and strove zealously to cultivate all the virtues, but especially purity of heart, which she resolved to preserve throughout life. Several times her hand was asked in marriage by young men of distinguished birth, even such who came from princely families, and her relatives, especially her own father, urged her to give her consent. But Zmaragda steadfastly declined all the offers of her suitors and redoubled her fasts, vigils, and prayers so as not to swerve in her fidelity to her divine bridegroom. Her father died while still she was very quite, she was still quite young. Then she entered the convent of the Poor Clares, which was located near her hometown. At her reception, she received the name of Eustochium. In the convent, she lived completely absorbed in God, devoted to prayer, work, and ministering to her sick sisters. Her spare time, she devoted to the cont contemplation of the life and sufferings of Jesus and Mary. She fostered special devotion to our Blessed Lady, her favorite prayer was the Hail Mary, which she was wont to recite as often as a thousand times on Our Lady's feast days. One time when the plague ravaged Messina, Sister Eustochium volunteered to take care of her fellow sisters who had been stricken, and regardless of any danger to her own life, she nursed them with tender charity and patience and prepared them for a happy end. Eustochium had spent 11 years in the convent when she was seized with a strong impulse to lead a stricter and still more secluded life. She sought permission of Pope Callistus III to found another convent in Messina, where, with several other sisters who were, who were of the same mind, she could observe the original rule of St. Clair without any mitigations, under the guidance of the Friars Minor. The permission was granted, and her mother and sisters built a modest convent for her on a height known as Virgin Mount. There, Eustochium, with several companions and a few relatives, entered in the year 1457, when she was but 27 years old. Like all the works of God, this new foundation was severely persecuted. But Eustochium overcame all hardships with confidence in God, steadfast patience, and the miraculous assistance that was frequently granted by God himself. At the age of 33, at the age of 30 years, which was the age prescribed by the church for those who hold the office of abbess, Eustochium was elected to that position. As time went on, a select band of spiritual daughters developed about her, who, guided by her equally loving and enlightened direction, became a delight to God as well as an object of admiration and edification to the people. After about 20 years spent in working for God and her fellow sisters, while she received much evil from the world, but also much consolation from God, her pure soul took its flight to the eternal mansions. A star was seen to rise aloft from her cell at the moment of her death. Her body, which is still incorrupt, is preserved in the convent church at Messina. Many miracles have occurred through her intercession, and the inhabitants of Messina have frequently experienced the effects of her powerful protection in the time of earthquakes. Pope Pius VI approved the public veneration that has been accorded her.
on virginity. Consider how highly blessed Eustochium valued this virtue, since she declined so many splendid offers of marriage and refused to yield to the urgent representations of her family in order to preserve her virginity. She recognized by the light of faith how much nobler than mere worldly marriage are the tender nuptials with the heavenly bridegroom, out of love for whom she preserved her purity. While Christ dwelt on earth, he wished to have only pure souls near him. His precursor was a virgin. His mother was a virgin. His foster father was a virgin. The virginal John was his beloved disciple. And when the apostles entered upon their vocation as his followers, they too observed perfect purity. How sublime the vocation of those souls whom God calls to the state of virginal purity. They become the intimates of our Lord, and although still living in the flesh, they lead, so to say, the lives of angels. Have you always esteemed the state of virginity thus in the light of faith? Consider that virginal purity can be preserved here on earth only at the cost of many a struggle and effort. It is the lily among thorns. Eustochium understood this even before she entered the convent. That is why she fasted and practiced severe penances, avoided association with the vain and pleasure-loving world, devoted herself assiduously to prayer and spiritual exercises, and honored the Queen of Virgins and Mother of God with special affection. If you wish to be faithful in preserving purity of heart, you must apply the same means. You must not indulge softness and the pleasures of sense, but rather keep rebellious nature submissive by means of Christian mortification. You must love seclusion, and when it is necessary to mingle with others in the world, you must not try to attract attention to yourself, nor be too free with your attentions toward others. You must fortify yourself by means of prayer and the frequent reception of the sacraments, and cultivate a tender devotion to the Mother of God. Have you been properly careful to use these means? Is it not on account of neglecting them that you have to suffer so many assaults of temptation? Consider the reward that accrues to the souls that faithfully preserve their purity. If they do it out of love for God, they may justly be called spouses of Christ, even here on earth. If the divine spouse jealously watches over them, he also rewards these faithful brides here below with the sweetest consolations. It will be easy for them to deprive themselves of worldly joys, for they can say with the psalmist, Better is one day in thy courts, O Lord, above thousands. Psalm 83. And when her last day arrives, the day of death, which is such a bitter thing to worldlings, then the spouse of Christ will go forth joyfully. It is the day of her nuptials, which shall bind her forever to the beloved of her heart. Should you not be glad to live detached from the world in order to partake of such joy? Prayer of the Church Almighty and merciful God, who didst glorify the life of blessed Eustochium, hidden entirely in Christ as it was, Grant upon her intercession and our imitation of her that buried with Christ in this world, we may deserve to rise to eternal life through Christ our Lord. Blessed Eustochium, pray for us.